If you have a child that came from a seed. See, understand is that God created in order to keep multiplying, something has to be inside. So it's just as the word that is inside of us, when we open our mouth, we are literally, in a sense, impregnating something to blossom. Amen. We can impregnate a negative thing or we can impregnate a positive thing. God's desire is that we speak positive, that we speak affirmation, that we speak something in existence, not to see. See, here's the thing. When, when, when a male and female come together and they produce a child, it's a seed. But you already know that nine months down the road that you're going to hold the baby. So you don't look at the seed, you look at the baby. It's the same thing in our lives. When we're speaking something, you don't look at what's in front of you. You look at what is down the road. That's God's vision. That's God's desire in our heart, in our life. Amen? So, the earth, the water, and the air does not have a seed, and they're the only things that cannot be duplicated. Can't make water, can't make air, and you can't make dirt. Three things that cannot, everything else is created by seed. Everything. So if we look at that in God's realm, God, when, when, when he spoke to Adam and Eve, and he said, you can eat of every tree, that, but don't eat of this. There's a reason why. Because he knew that if they did, that it would cause an effect that would last forever until Christ came. And then it still goes on because we still have two kingdoms. But we realize and understand that everything has a seed. So I want you to think about it this way, that every time you say something, you are literally impregnating something. When you're angry, which the enemy loves to get us angry, get us bitter, get jealous, all the stuff that that maybe the enemy wants to do, when the enemy does that, all he's doing is, he is suggesting to you to go ahead and impregnate that. And make it happen. And what happens is, we do, out of our flesh. Out of our flesh, out of our desire to see, get even or do something, but God says, be slow to speak, quick to listen. Slow to anger. Why? Why is that scripture so important? Because it tells us to temper ourselves Amen. into a place that we literally, he says, look, no, every time we open our mouth, I can, I know God's not doing it, but I can just see God going, ah, ah. But that's the thing. Is realize every time we open up, we don't. And you know what? Today's world, there's so much stuff out there that's just pulling at you and pulling at you and make you make a decision and line up here that everything is outside of God's Word. Hallelujah. In Psalms 139, 14, it says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are a creation. We are a specific weird people that God created. When you accepted Jesus Christ, you're no longer the same. What is a Christian? You can't describe a Christian. You can't describe a Christian. Because you have a body like everybody else, but yet... Your home is not here. You've been, you now have a new home, but even though you're living here, but you really have another home, and yet, but yet you still have the power to be able to do what God wants you to do, and, but it doesn't make sense. We as Christians, it doesn't make sense, but we are a new creation. We're a strange creature, but we have power. We have power to do that which God has designed us to do. He said, you know what? I'm going to make a lot of little Jesuses. Yes. Amen. I'm going to make a lot of little Jesuses because 
That is how I will be able to continue to be able to do that which I need to do to see the plan come to completion. Hallelujah. We also see here in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. It says, I call to heaven and earth to record this day against you. Listen to this. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Amen. Every morning when you wake up, we have a choice to be able to receive life or death, cursing or blessing. That's a choice that he has given to us. Every morning, we can walk up, we can wake up in the morning and say, this is a blessing. We can wake up, listen to me, you can wake up. <laughs> this is a blessed day. Thank you, Jesus. It's what you say. It's what you impregnate in your day. Let's be real. How many here have gotten up in the morning, just had a rough morning, didn't have a cup of coffee, you're running late, and it just seemed like all day, all day the day was bad? Because it started bad? You didn't proclaim that it was a blessed day? Because he gave you an opportunity. It's either going to be a blessed day, so it's going to be a blessing or a cursing. It's, it's something that we wake up every day. But we, by our nature, what we want to do is we want to call that which is not as if it is, but we want to do it in the negative. And we don't want to do it in the positive. Amen. But if we continue to keep allowing the Spirit of God to change and formulate our minds, we start to see God really starting to move. A scripture that I will always stand on, Proverbs 18.21 Death and life are in the power of our tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So, again, we're looking at fruit. Where's the fruit come from? Whatever you want, whatever you speak. If you speak death, guess what? Your fruit's coming back, it's going to kill you. Amen. Not kill you physically, but it's going to kill you emotionally, spiritually, financially, uh, uh, um, emotionally. It can mess you up. By what you say. Why? Because we are children of the Most High God. Amen. There's a mechanism now that's in us that when we speak, it does something. It actually does something. It impregnates something. You can, your family, your, your, your relationship with people, your, your job, whatever it may be. If we, every time we say something like that, we are going to get back that which would be so. Anybody getting anything out of this? Amen. It don't matter because I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So in James 1.19, as I was sharing earlier, Wherefore, my brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. God wants to use the weapons that we have for a force that the world is, needs to reckon with. We have that power. Think about this. When all of a sudden, as we know right now, there's a political realm out there right now that there is so much, there is so much division, there's so much hatred, there's so much bitterness, there's so much jealousy, and you know what? It's not just coming from the Word, it's in the body of Christ. Yes. As, 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 as um, Troy Ann said earlier, shut up! Stop it. You understand that all you're doing is lining up with the enemy's tactic to give them more power to pr produce more evil. Amen. That's all it is. That's all it is. See, we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and rulers and darkness. So you know what? We're not fighting against, we're not fight I'm not fighting against Johnny G. I'm not fighting against Carl. I'm not fighting against Annette. Amen. I'm fighting against the spirit that is out there that's trying to get me to line up with the world. Yes. Instead of lining up with the kingdom of God. Amen. Because he knows. He knows. Guess what? If everyone in this room, all of a sudden, God really started working on us and really started getting us, and all we did was nothing but just, just profess the blessings and profess God's 
God's goodness and what He's what He can do and all. Man, let me tell you. People be saying, "What? What the heck is going over there at the River Church? Like everything they say? How? Why it should? Why? Because it's God's word coming out of us, coming out of us. But what hinders us is our mouth." It hinders us. Hallelujah. Again, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the, disobedience, to the obedience of Christ. And I've shared this before and understand. See, here's the thing. If you say something and yet you're praying for God to do something, what happens is the words that you speak are now more powerful than God's word. Listen to me. It's because it has now exalted itself above God's word. And when it exalts itself above God's word, God can't do anything. That's why he says take every thought captive that would exalt itself above Christ. But see, when we hold God's word to a different standard and it's above what this world says, guess what? It will accomplish. Because why? It is above God. It is above the world's word. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Over to Matthew chapter 4. Hallelujah. I'm going to read this out of the Common English Bible. Notes. <clears throat> Verse 1 to 11. Now here's Jesus. I want you to see something. There's a couple different things I want to look at. It says in verse 1, then the, spirit of, then the Spirit, the Spirit of God, led Jesus up into the wilderness so that the devil might tempt him. Let me say that again. The Spirit led Jesus up into the wilderness so that the devil might attempt him. Do, do you think that God sometimes allows things to happen yes. so that you can get it right. Yes. So that we can come to that place of understanding. Here's Jesus. Jesus was being led by the Spirit in the wilderness for the enemy to tempt him. How many times are you tempted? All day long? All day long. Amen. It's the same thing. You're tempted all day long. But how are you going to receive or how are you going to get out of that wilderness or out of that temptation? Verse 2, after Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was starving. And the tempter came to him and said, since you are God's son, command these stones to become bread. Now, then we notice that the first time he tempts him is basically he tempts him to the flesh. How many know here that the flesh the flesh is one of the hardest things to conquer. Amen? Amen? And to understand, and it says here in verse 4, and this comes out, Jesus speaks. Jesus speaks. Comes out of Deuteronomy 8.3. It is written, people won't live only by bread, but by every word spoken by God. Not only live not won't, won't live only by bread, but by every word spoken by God. Yes. Let me say that again. Not by what you eat, not by what will sustain this body, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Amen. So in essence, if we are speaking God's word, guess what? God will provide all that is needed according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So if we're speaking God's word and we're walking as Jesus was walking, guess what? Even though the enemy comes to you and says, hey, listen, that's not, that's not what's happening. 
then we should be able to know what the word of God says so that we can literally speak God's word and say, excuse me, enemy, this is what God's word says. Hello? But how many times what we do is we interject our own thoughts, our own opinions, our own idea, and what happens is it actually is void because it's not God's word. And after that, the devil brought him. Now, this is the thing that was always interesting before, and this is, I'm not going to get into it, it's a whole other sermon. But you notice this. Um, in verse 3, the tempter came to him. The enemy came to Jesus. The next two temptings, the Bible says that he took him, took Jesus. So, I, I always ask God, I say, God, what is if the enemy came to him at first and talked to him, and then it says, and then Satan took him. So I can only imagine, and this is only, this is not scriptural, I'm just telling, I'm just what I, what I can imagine. That I bet you they were just having conversation. You know, it's just like me and, you know, like he says, you know, go ahead, make, make, that, make that stones in the, in the bread. You'll be all right. And, and then, come on. And they, 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 they probably were talking. They said, come on, let me just show you something. Come on. It says he took him. It took him. Now, Jesus could have said, hold it, I'm not going with you. But he went. He went with him. And it says, and after that, the, the devil brought him to the holy city and stood him on the highest point of the temple. And he said to him, since you are this God's son, Throw yourself down, for it is written, I will command my angels concerning you, and they will take you up in their hands so that you won't hit, hit your feet on the stone. You know that comes out of Psalms 91, 11, 12. That was the enemy speaking the word of God. But he didn't do the whole thing. Verse 13 says that basically nothing will harm you. See, so the enemy's always going to leave out something. The enemy's going to always leave out something that you think, you think, is like, well, he knows all, yes, he knows all scripture, but he's not going to literally tell you everything because he knows that he is under, he is under God's feet and he's under your feet. So when we realize that, we understand. So guess what? Guess what? Do you think that the enemy can use somebody in your family? Do you think he can use your spouse? Do you think he can use your children? Yes, he can. Do you think? Do you think the enemy can use your pastor? Yeah. Yes, you can. You can go like this. <laughs> That's why we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of spiritual wickedness in high places. We have to be careful because guess what? We're all flesh, and we're all growing to the knowledge of God. We're all growing into that place of perfection. We're all growing and desiring to be transformed by the power of the Spirit of God into, into the image of Christ Jesus. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. You can read the rest of it later. Hallelujah. Jesus says to the, to the Pharisees and Sadducees, O generation of vipers, how can ye be evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Jesus is telling them, guess what? All I have to do is listen to what you say, and I know what's in your heart. That's why you can be around people, and they can call themselves Christians. They can call themselves this, 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 and everything. But watch what they say. That's how you know the fruit. Because out of the heart, that's why jesting, listen to me, that's why jesting sometimes is dangerous. Yes. Because we may say something in jest and laugh about it, but really deep down inside, it's coming out of our heart. Yes. And it attacks people. Yes. And sometimes it hurts people. Yes. There's wrong times to say it. Yes, there is. And we got to be careful. we got to be careful because, again, Getting back to the very beginning, 
Everything that we say comes out of our mouth has a mechanism, has a seed in it that will impregnate something to happen. Even just. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. In verse 36, but I say unto you, listen to me now, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt justify, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. The word idle means this, inactive, lazy, useless, listen to this one, barren, mm -hmm. no fruit. Mm -hmm. No fruit. So, let's put it in, in our, uh, so we will stand before him and every idle word, every barren <coughs> word, every not fruitful word that we speak, we will be held accountable to. Why? Why? See, don't worry about the world. Say, well, we'll look at them. Don't worry. They don't know Jesus. They're already condemned to hell. But he's talking to us, folks. Yeah. He's talking to us. He says, guess what? I have inside of you the mechanism in order to impregnate that which I desire to do. And here's the thing. When you do that, guess what? You're going to be held accountable for that. Yeah. <coughs> We're going to be held accountable for that. Oh, I'll just pray and just ask the Lord to forgive me. Yeah. That's a whole nother sermon, folks. Amen. God, Paul says, God forbid. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 8, 14 to 17. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you are not received the spirit of bodies again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And as children, then heirs. Heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that you will suffer with him that you may also be glorified together. So now, putting it all in perspective, when you accept Christ Jesus, and the Spirit of God came upon you, came in you, not only is he with you, but he's in you, now you have a responsibility. Yeah. That responsibility is to understand God's Word, to understand the power that's inside of you, the power that's inside of you is dunamis power. Yeah. Dunamis power. Explosive power. Power that you can see things change. So that when all of a sudden we start to realize and understand how many times, and I'm just going to say this, that how many times that we, 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 we pray and we ask God to do something and turn around and we, and we, and we know and avoid it by saying something else. And we wonder why God's not doing it. Because he can't. He can't do it because all of a sudden now your word has now become a higher standard than his word. So we realize and understand that we have to watch what we say. You know, it, that's why when, you know, throughout the scriptures today we saw that God's telling us over and over and over, all the way back to Genesis, all the way to Revelation. I'll tell you, is he talking about there's power in you to be able to speak and to do that which I've given and called you to do. God wants to see. God's will is that none would perish. We all come to the saving knowledge of Christ. So do we really pray for those that we know that are, are not saved and, and we just we, we pick and choose who we want to see saved? Well, I don't really like that, so I'm not going to pray for them. Do you know they're going to hell? Amen. You know, we've got to realize and understand. What would God say? What would Jesus do? <laughs> Jesus would say, guess what? I'm going to go to the cross, but I'm going to do it all, but, but I'm not doing it for you. No, he did it for the whole world. Amen. He did it for all. 
So they're all who come to the saving knowledge of Christ. So we can't pick and choose who needs to get saved. We can't pick and choose who we want to see healed and delivered and set free. It's only by God's design. But when he tells us to open up our mouth and speak, that we don't do it in idle words. Amen. That we don't do it in our own flesh. That we don't do it because it irritates us or it makes us angry. We do it, you know, we just say, Amen. Yes, Bite your tongue. better to say that than to lash out and to say something. Amen. Because you're impregnating that person, that scenario, that situation, and guess what? Whatever you sow, you will reap. Yes. Amen. It will come back to you. People say, oh, it's karma. No. <laughs> it's God's word. That's right. God's word says it will return. To it, that when we speak, and we speak according to God's word, in power and might in which he's given to us. When we speak it, it will not return void. It will do that we sent for it. It will prosper. It will bring about completion. That's the power of God's word. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. Father, we just thank you this morning. I pray that, Lord God, that every word that was spoken, that, Lord God, would not fall on deaf ears. But, Lord God, would be planted on good soil. Lord, I'm reminded of the sower. That, Lord, it falls in many times in many different places. People get excited, and then when the cares of the world come, they forget about it. Well, the enemy comes and we, we get excited and we hear it. And man, I, I, that's good. And we go outside and all of a sudden something happens. The enemy steals it right from us. Yeah. Yeah. But Father, I pray that, Lord God, that this word falls into deep, good soil. Lord, so that, Lord, that we would see fruit. Lord, you have called us, Lord, to be able to be, Lord, those that are, we are, we are, we are sowers. But we are, we're sowers. All day long, we're sowing seed to the world. Lord, are we impregnating good things and seem possible and, 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 and awesome things come about, or are we sowing negative? Opposition, anger, bitterness, frustration. Father, we don't want to be on the enemy's side. Father, we want to be on your side. And Father, we desire to see your, your plan and purpose come to fulfillment. Father, help us to stay in our lane. Help us not to worry about what somebody else is doing in their lane. Because in our lane, Lord God, there's no traffic. Lord, it's absolutely wide open. We can floor it. Father, help us, Lord God, to look around. That, Lord God, when you ask us to say something, Lord God, that we always remember that we need to be slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to anger, slow to wrath. That, Lord, when you ask us to say it, we speak it, believing by faith that you will accomplish that which you have asked us and called us to speak and do. So, Father, today I thank you, Lord. Father, first and foremost, Lord, we just start to continue, Lord, to change our minds. Yes, Lord. Our mindset. Help us to think kingdom principle. Yes. Help us to think down the road. Help us to think, Lord, even as, Lord God, that, that infant, Lord God, that, Lord, we don't look at an infant, Lord. We, we look at that, that embryo, but, Lord, we ultimately see nine months, we're going to be able to hold a child. Amen. That's the same thing with our words that we speak. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word, for it is alive. It's fresh and new every morning. Father, be with us, protect us, guide us, guard us as we leave this place. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come and to give today through the tithes and offerings, Lord God. We do it as the first day of the week, the first fruits of our labor, Lord God, that you have provided for us. 
And Father, we thank you, Lord, for the multitudes that, Lord, will be reached because of, Lord, us sowing seed into the kingdom. Yes. And Father, we bless you, Lord. Father, be with the ladies, Lord, as they gather afterwards. Bless their time together. May it be fruitful and be able to multiply. Yes, Lord. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for all you're doing and all you're going to do. And Father, we just give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor for what you've accomplished this morning. May we take it. May we meditate on it. May we chew on it. May it feed us so that we can grow and become more and more like your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Make sure you greet somebody before you leave. Just don't go shooting out the door. Amen. Amen.